Hello, everybody. Welcome to our uh, class, Scientific Foundation of Health. In the second deep class, we'll be talking about the module number one, which is all about the importance of health. Earlier uh, last week, we conducted first session, uh, which were actually we gave you a general introduction to what is health and uh, what is significant. In today's class, we'll be talking about further into module one. Okay. Let me revise what we did in the previous class. So what we talked about was actually health is an asset. You are blessed if you have a naturally gifted health. But for most people, actually health challenges are very normal. And what is good is actually medical interventions are always available for you to take care and actually you can get back to your normal state of working with certain interventions. However, there are certain challenges which we have to face on day-to-day -day basis regarding our health. One, some of them actually environmental challenges like pollution and other things. Then there are professional challenges like stress, traffic jams, and just in workplaces and other things. And people also are very casual in their approach to health. While nature has given them a good health, there are certain things that they do or they don't do, which actually pose some kind of a challenges to them. That also we have considered in the last class. Then there are some trendy practices often do more harm than benefit, such as like going to gym without scientific basis or dieting without considering the nutritionist also causing a lot of problems. Once we made this kind of a general introduction, we also shared the course details with you, what is that we are going to cover. And in this um, course that there are five modules, each module is dedicated to one topic that we actually mentioned. And we also shared that how the assessment will be done in this first semester. And this is a one credit course for which actually we have one class every week. And the message of this course is very simple. Why living healthy lifestyle is so important and what are the benefits of that? And how we can we achieve the good health and well-being all through our life? And today we'll be moving to the module number one, which is about good health and its balance for positive mindset. Okay, let me start. See, in the module number one, uh, which is titled the Good Health and its Balance for Positive Mindset, we are studying what is health, why health is very important. Now, the point is actually health is not only a requirement, it's actually the essential thing to achieve other things. For example, if you are healthy enough, then there are many things that you can do. If you are having some kind of a health challenge, then you need to make a lot of compromises. For that reason, actually, if you are already born healthy, then you should maintain it. And if you are born with certain health challenges, then medical interventions will help you to get back to the normalcy. But either way, you should understand that health is very important. Apart from that, actually, we're also studying what are the influences, uh, what are the factors that influence your health. For example, environmental, hereditary, and communal society, all those things actually impact your health. And let us also study which actually which are those factors. And then health and health behavior. Many people have certain attitude approaches towards health that also will be studying in this. Health beliefs and advertisements. See, today one of the <coughs> one of the interfaces that everybody actually has is media and advertisement. Many a times these advertisements may be good, but often they also very very harmful in their content and also trending sets um, and other things. There are advantages of good health, then we will be talking about that. What is the short term and the long term benefits? And finally, health and society. Health, while it is an individual, it is the surrounding society which actually determines and many times actually enhances your health practices. So we'll be talking about health at personal level, family level, and also the health and the interplay between health and personality, and how actually profession will play an important role both in demanding you to be healthy and also how it's going to pose certain challenges for an individual. Health and behavior. Uh, disparities in health in different vulnerable groups. See, although society is a large one and not all people have access to everything at equal places, there are remote areas where actually health um, facilities may not be there. And even if in common cities like uh, the crowded population and traffic jumps came up, can cause health challenges. So this is what we mean by vulnerable groups. That means there are groups which are actually are likely to get into some health challenges. While health is a physical thing, the mind, the psychology part also plays a big role in that. That also will be studying. Methods to improve good psychological health, psychological disorders. Psychology is also as important as nutrition and fitness. And now if you are a normal person, then it's okay. Then you need to maintain that balance all through your life. But in case there are disorders, 
um, mainly due to either the stress of the uh, profession and other things that we'll also be covering. And finally, we'll how to maintain good health, mindful for spiritual and intellectual health. I so told you physical, I mean, health is a physical thing, then it's psychological. At different level, it's also spiritual and intellectual. So that you also take. That means as a whole package, it should be correct. Physically good, mentally good, intellectually good, and spiritually good. Okay. And changing health for the good health. What it actually means is, now depending on the age, depending on the circumstances you are living in, so depending on the time of work and other things, you need to practice certain things which are different. So that also will, will be talking. And finally, health and personality. See, you are your you are your health and health is your personality. In the sense, actually, personality is impacted by your health status and health again will impact your personality to a large extent. So let us start. Let me start a preamble. Okay. Physical fitness is not the sole basis of being healthy. Most of the people confuse that actually a big, good physique and a fitness um, is actually complete health. It is not. Okay. So the while it is a foundation, it is not the whole thing. Okay. Being healthy means being mentally and emotionally fit. Yes, you have to be physically healthy, physically fit, but that is not sufficient. It is a necessary condition, but it is not a sufficient condition as mathematicians put it. Okay. Being healthy should be part of your overall lifestyle. The way actually you do certain things daily throughout your life, the concern for your health and practices for that maintaining that health should be all the time uh, should be on the top of your mind. Living a healthy lifestyle can help prevent chronic diseases and long-term illness. So while physical health is important to enjoy life, okay, the I mean, good healthy practices actually avoid some kind of a health disaster that could happen. For example, if you uh, pick up a bad habit, then actually it, it will not only affect your health right now, in the longer term actually it can terminate you much faster than what you want to be. Feeling good about yourself and taking care of your health are important for self-esteem and self-image. As I told you, physical health is important, mental health is important, but actually the level of spiritual and confidence that you have at psychological level also makes a big thing. A self-confidence, self-image and self-esteem. That means you should treat yourself as something of an asset and you should be ready to accept the realities with you. Maintain a healthy lifestyle by doing what is right for your body. So we all almost practically same. Okay, but then in terms of our health requirement, in terms of our nutrition requirement, in terms of our health concerns, we are different. So we should be unique and we are in, in, indeed unique in our approach, I mean our uh, status. So you have to take care of that. And positive thinking and good health are the foundation for our health, uh, health status. Many a time single thought, a single remark, single compliment actually can change your life. So one small positive thought can change your life whole day. So I mean, somebody tells you something good about you in the morning and the whole day you'll feel very happy. So let me <coughs> repeat this, okay. Fitness is important, but that is not complete. You have to go beyond fitness, which actually includes mental and emotional fit. And thirdly, secondly, you should also have to have some kind of a concern for your unique needs and unique demands of your personal health. One of the problems of today's world is actually you are facing challenges from everywhere and these challenges make you sometimes depressed. Okay, but under any circumstances, you should have some kind of a positive outlook. By positive outlook, we mean that so you are looking at the situation and feeling that yes, this is something which I can face, this is something that I can solve, this is something can actually I find a solution. So positivity is something that can change somebody's uh, way of thinking. It can revive some full of negativity. Normally what happens, people think negatively, they are scared, they have fears, all those things would happen, they have uncertainty and all. While these are all tendencies, you can certainly overcome them. Positive thinking or an optimistic attitude is the process of focusing on the positive side of any situation. Whenever you are in a trouble, when you are in a stress situation, it is always possible that to come above that and see that there is a positive side, there is a uh, good side about this. Okay, That is called optimism. It plays an important role in an individual personality. It might affect your physical and mental health also. So it is all interplay, for example, your physics. I mean, your physique will actually affect your mind, your mind will affect your psychology, your psychology will affect your emotional things and all. So there is an interplay. So you have to take care that you are physically fit, mentally optimistic and all. People who med uh, meditate daily are full of life as it appears them every day. So there are certain practices. Maybe it is too early for you to meditate, but then as you 
get into a professional course and professional line of thought, it is better that you start meditating somewhere soon. Okay? It does not mean if you have positive thinking, you ignore the problems. See, optimism doesn't mean that you are ignoring <laughs> the challenges on hand, but you are actually facing them with a positive mindset. It means facing those problems with a positive attitude. The positive attitude would mean, okay, so I have a problem, I know, but then I will have confidence to overcome. That is the positive attitude. People with positive attitude are more liable to live healthy lives since they have a more optimistic and belief towards future. It's actually, you see, pessimism and optimism, they are actually two sides of the coin, okay. So either side you look, actually you will see the same thing, okay. But then if you are looking at an optimistic view, then actually a kind of a positive energy that is produced will help you to solve your problems in much better fashion, okay. Research has demonstrated that positive thinking helps people to mental images and ease depression regardless of whether they are generally optimistic or pessimistic, okay. So what actually is a positive thinking, okay? You don't have to worry about the consequences. Consequences will have anyway happen. But then if you have that attitude, it will help. And here is an example by our beloved uh, Captain Dhoni, who says how, how to manage and how to have a positive attitude. I feel equally frustrated. Uh, I also feel angry at times. I feel disappointed, but what is important is none of these are constructive. You know, what needs to be done right now uh, is more important than any of these emotions. So when I get into the thinking of what needs to be done, what is the next thing that I can plan, who is the individual I can use. And once I get into it, you know, I, I, I'm controlling my emotions in a much better way. So I would say I'm like everyone else. It's just that uh, I control my emotions uh, slightly better than uh, some of the other individuals, you know, because um, I feel, uh, you know, human beings have a lot of emotions and especially us Indians, you know, uh, we thrive on emotions. So, you know, it will be wrong to say that, you know, these are something that doesn't come to my mind. Yes, you know, I, I also face each and everything, uh, but I always felt that my emotions should be uh, under my control. And if I'm able to do that, then my thinking will be more constructive and also it will help me think more about the process than the result because the result can put undue pressure on, on the individual or, or as a team in, in, in the full. So with this uh, positive remark from um, Dhoni, you can understand that no matter what your position, you may be leading your Indian cricket team for your nation or you may be leading a soft software team at your work or actually you may be leading a set of engineers all those actually you have challenges and the way to control your emotion is actually shown by him okay now once that uh, the positive thinking and benefits uh, you mean uh, the method you understood now let us look at the positive uh, benefits of that positive thinking for example it can give a longer lifespan many are people who are actually depressed chronically uh, facing challenges they terminate themselves very early so one of the benefits of positive thinking is longer lifespan. That means you may live more than many years. For example, now the average lifespan of people is increasing and in India it is around 70 years. That should be the target. Less stress and anxiety. You don't feel anxious and stressful in your job. The way, the way Captain told you. So pressures are always there, but then the way you look at it is very important. Have a better immunity. So the status of your mind also physical also gives you a kind of an immunity. Immunity is your ability to overcome any diseases or any fight against the health. Better cardiovascular condition, this is regarding your health or maybe your heart. Cardiovascular would mean actually the status of the health of your health. Better physical and psychological health, this is also important because the physical, I told you the, the ability to move, ability to walk, ability to play and all, they are actually determines your psychological health also. Good resistance to common cold. So many a times you, you become susceptible to some kind of a common bacterial or viral infection, not because they are strong, but you are weak and because of your healthy practices. Better skill to tackle panic causing situation. If there are situations like pandemic or some kind of a stress due to examination, project work and all, it will actually help you. So the benefits of positive thinking are good. And that's the reason actually you should be looking at positive outlook and should be learning from what Dhoni said. But in, in general or in total, uh, a positive outlook, an optimistic outlook for life is something which is desirable, 
which is practicable and also it is something which you can learn. So now having said that physical thing, then we'll move on to mental health benefits. Of, so more creativity. See, today we are we are in a very competitive world. So you will be making greater contribution provided you are creative. So creativity is our ability to see everything uh, in a different way and a different angle and coming with either a solution or an artistic uh, artifact for that. For instance, actually now you are part of a team and you are working on a particular challenging project, then your creativity will help you. But to that creativity to happen, you should have a balance of mind and a clear mind. And that's one of the benefits of a mental health. Greater problem solving skills today, both as an individual, as a team member, as a professional or a social member or a family member, problems are all the time. That means starting from morning to evening, you'll have one or the other problem, many significant, many are not significant. But ability to solve them, to, to gather all your mental ability, information, skills, and to solve at a given moment, actually it means you should have a clear mind. And the mental health benefit actually actually help you to problem, be in a great position to solve them. Clear thinking. See, so many of us actually have a muddled thinking. What it means is actually when you start thinking, we actually don't think. We try to recall something which has happened, or somebody's opinion will interfere, or some wrong information will come into that. So in those cases, actually, you need a lot of clear thinking. And that becomes more important when actually you are in a very professional world. Because sometimes a, a, a small mistake in a decision can actually cause something, a defeat in a match, or a, a losing a customer and other things. And most more than anything, better moods. <laughs> As you know that there are moods which actually make you very happy, enjoy everything in around around you. If you are maintaining a good mental health, that is one of the benefits. And better coping skills. Despite of our all effort, if there is a challenge which comes, maybe it is pandemic, maybe a failure in examination, maybe a failure uh, in in doing certain things. But then your ability, because of your mental status, you your better coping skills. And more importantly, less depression. The depression is, seems to be one thing which actually is affecting and causing a lot of problems for many people. Many reasons are there. Maybe you are not capable of uh, living up to the expectation of your environment, maybe in a school or a college or in your profession or society. That is actually creating a kind of a uh, I mean, uh, depression in people and losing their self-confidence and self-esteem. But if you have a good mental health, actually it will overcome. Here is a small list of uh, health benefits of positive thinking. They include increased lifespan, which is already there. Okay, lower rates of depression, lower levels of distress. Okay, greater resistance to the common cold, uh, better psychological and physiological well-being, better cardiovascular, that is mean health. Okay, and better coping skills to hardships. This is exactly what they mean by coping skills. Okay, and now that I have told you, positive and optimistic thinking is needed, and I have also listed you the benefits and how do you do that and how do you achieve that. Science has come up with many solutions to do that, and that we'll be trying to list them now. Okay, how to maintain positive thinking for good health? The first is actually maintain a healthy lifestyle. Healthy lifestyle is actually maintaining the right routine. Okay, set a goal to work out at least 30 minutes a day, or go for a walk or a jog. So many people actually become lazy, mainly for many reasons. Actually, maybe their work is too much, they get less sleep and all. But ensure that you have some kind of a workout, as could be as less as a walking in the morning or evening or going to a gym sometime. Consuming a healthy diet which will assist maintain positive thinking. Food has, a, excuse me, food has an impact on your both physical and mental status. So you have to have a healthy diet. Healthy diet would mean you have a nutrition of all the kind all the time. So this is the first thing. That means maintain a healthy lifestyle. Then take life easily and life and off often. It doesn't mean that you are becoming a comedy of your life but then laughing is actually also a skill which actually takes a humorous humorous way of solving the problem or facing okay so when you laugh you feel less stress even if you are in a stressful situation a little smile or a laugh can boost up your mood and make you feel relaxed perceive humor in your busy life there are most most successful people in the world actually there are humorous people and one thing Gandhi said that if I am not humor I would have committed suicide long back. So this was from Gandhi who actually fought and got freedom for us. So humor is nothing uh, less important than anything else. So some of the tips that you have to have for healthy uh, drink more water. People for some reason either forget or they don't make provisions for enough water. Exercises which I already told you here. 
eat fruits okay love yourself that is important of all, all the things in the world no it is you and only you who matters in the long run so you should be having kind of an affection for you prefer smaller meals sometimes a heavy meal may cause you a lot of dizziness and sleep so avoid that one you what we call working lunch okay quit smoking uh, if you already started smoking get enough sleep that's also important because of this uh, additional devices like TVs mobiles and no people's sleeping pattern has actually changed and that is it looks having a kind of an impact on people their health so you should be avoiding that so the, the thing that we have told in this particular slide is that how do you get into the mental and healthy state of both mental and physical so maintain a healthy lifestyle and a laugh often take it make it humorous uh, uh, attempt everywhere okay and then actually there are certain other practices which you can also start because you're still in your you are in even in your teens and all so teenagers and actually then you can start put them pen down your daily thoughts it is a good practice if you write your diary either in the evening or the morning and now there is a practice called journaling journaling is a process of writing whatever the few words that you get in your mind as soon as you get up or wake up in the morning so pen down your daily thoughts writing down your daily thoughts in journals can make you feel relaxed and write down what it, what you are grateful for this is one more thing we know that we are always feeling that we are handicapped we don't have all the facilities we don't have all the resources but then if you think it deeply there are things that you have given you have got either from your parents or from your society for which you should be grateful so one of the great practices is to get up in the morning okay uh, then take 5 to 10 minutes to write down for which you are grateful okay in fact in the western countries there is something an event called thanksgiving sometime later in the late, later part of the year they do a week together of thanksgiving where actually they find people whom who have helped them or from whom they, they should be grateful small gratitude towards life or every happening can lead to a positivity be, be kind to somebody who you encounter maybe your classmate maybe your teacher or maybe your neighbor and that will also help you so one good practice is pen down your daily thoughts and it's called journaling now i guess you don't you need a paper also you can put it on your mobile on your mobile uh, like um, you can use any any note kind of a thing and all then another thing actually if you are a little more disciplined you can meditate meditation is actually focusing your mind on the mind itself sometimes in the early stages it makes big problem but then meditation as a practice can take you long way in the long run of your life people who have practiced meditation for 10 20 30 years seems to have expressed and shown I mean, reported lot of progress or lot of help for them meditate regularly because it boosts your concentration levels and positivity and if you focus on positive thinking the negativity will stay away from you that means see it's like a matter so if some matter is occupying your face then actually the other matter has no way to come only a vacuum actually can be taken over by somebody else so if you start having a positive thinking then actually it will repel away the negative thought that you have so let me also give another tip on this how to keep your mental health journal so sitting here just not knowing what to say it is has been a long day and i am tired but i can't figure out why okay this kind of a feeling that you sit in a corner there right actually relieve your mind and that's the important thing and there are few more steps actually <clears throat> surround yourself with positive people today actually we have this problem that is more and more people are becoming either pessimistic or different are indifferent to these happenings that happen in and around them they may not like the work they have they may not study the men they like the course they have they may not like to put their get in the <clears throat> in the mess something like that so one of the ways actually to maintain your good health is to surround yourself with positive people that means people who appreciate whatever they have to a different extent when you have a positive people in your life you can depend upon them for helpful positive direction that means they will tell you no no this is not the way to look at it. don't be so pessimistic don't be, don't lose your heart okay then you can get into this that's what is actually ha happens if you are surrounded by positive people and avoid negative people because they will demotivate you for example whenever you see somebody who is in challenge or who have a negative thought actually you also get depressed so you avoid that so what you need to do in the meditation here is a tip actually 10 types of meditation focused breathing that means it is called actually pranayama in, 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 in india so in actually you just focus on your breathing that means left nostril or right nostril okay box breathing anxiety relief meditation this is actually when you are anxious and you are doing something 
and you get tensed up, then you are doing this. <laughs> Maybe you have seen this uh, recent World Cup. There's a player called Ronaldo. So every time he gets a penalty kick, actually he makes some action, like he breathes out. Maybe you have seen this, and that is one way of releasing anxiety. Transcendental meditation is both physical, mental, and spiritual. Mindful meditation, as I told you, is focusing on positive things. Okay, walking meditation is something you you work or you are walking, but still you are focusing on something. Trauma informed meditation. This is for a medically challenged people where they have either gone on surgery and all because they would have pain and trauma, or even people who have an accident. Mantra meditation is some kind of a spiritual where actually you recite a particular given mantra, which actually help you to I mean, concentrate on that. Do nothing meditation is something where actually you want to kick away every thought which is coming into your mind and you want to clean your mind. Nature inspired meditation where actually you go for a walk in, 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 a, in a park or something like that and you try to do that. So the thing that we are telling here is actually you have to be positive by being among the positive people and when you are alone there are things that you can do like meditation and all depending on your situation either you can do a focused breathing or an anxiety relief breathing. Then the next step towards maintaining a good health is actually um, is actually balance. Balance is a, something which is very important because we are actually torn between different institutions. There is a family which demands something from you. There is a college which demands from anything from you. And there are companies which actually demand. There are other institutions that they demand. Now, how do you maintain your health by actually meeting all or you are satisfying all these demands? That becomes a big thing. For that actually balance is a very important in leading healthy person as well as a professional life. So you have to have some kind of a discipline towards either eating, sleeping, taking rest, or communicating with people, using mobiles and all. People get confused about how to balance both at the same time, and people with negativity lead nowhere. So that means either they work too much, they don't take rest, they don't take care of themselves, that will also lead to a problem. Uh, feeling positive thinking in life is like a fear. Hence, when you think positively, you balance your personal and professional life perfectly, which can reduce stress. See, it is an art and it is also a practice that you have to do. So this is a common thing for the next many years of your life that you are actually drawn by many. There are 10 assignments you have to write, there are lab work you have to complete, and there is some demand from your hostel and all those things all would happen. So that time actually you have to maintain a balance. Some of the things that you have to maintain is actually take care of your sleeping, lifestyle, have sports, exercise, weight reduction if you have already healthy and eating and diet and actually nutrition that means you should be checking you are not eating only one nutri nutrient all the time just because you like okay and you have to work kind of a balance so that means balance is another thing so there are many things i started so start with a healthy uh, laugh often bend down your thoughts meditate and surround by positive people and also have a balance okay and this also will result that means once you have balanced life Matter mental health. That means every minute of the day you feel the same. That means you are at a balance and you are actually healthy enough to face anything. Being optimistic is the key to successful life. A pessimistic person cannot perform his task properly and unable to gain his rewards. See, a pessimist loses a game even before it has started. An optimist actually try until the end and do that. And this is true for everything that you do, whether it's an examination, test, or something. A balanced positive thinking is the process of establishing ambitions, potency, and stability. See, as most of I mean, all of you are actually joining a professional course, and I, as I told you earlier, you are still in your teens, maybe 18, 19, 20, 19, something less, and this is the right time to establish your ambitions. That what is that you want to become? As after becoming an engineer, you want to be an entrepreneur, or you are a professional, or you want to run your own family business, or you want to become a politician, and all. So this is the time that actually you have to develop ambitions. And potency. Potency is ability to realize certain things. Your potency is actually another term for potential. That means you are born with certain abilities and born with certain skills. That you should be looking at. And a stability. Stability is actually you shouldn't have a zigzag moment in your life. Go up for a brief time and come down and go again go up. While failures are common, but then a stability is an important. What do you mean by stability? Is you have some parameters which ensures that you have a rewarding performance all the time. And positive thinking skills as a foundation to build physical and psychological fitness. It takes attention, concentration, loyalty, and reproduction. Let me repeat, a balanced positive thinking is a process. That means a, a process is there, it is continuous. It is like 
you are studying next year next four years it's the process of completing your engineering okay so establish your ambitions that what you want to do out of this course out of your life and okay and when you want to achieve this it takes your attention that means you have to stay away from the society for a few minutes a day then check what is your requirement then concentration that means once you have a solution you should put the concentration concentration would mean you have to study in your room or wherever in library without any disturbance or without any distraction loyalty and reproduction that is reproduction ability to use your knowledge as and when it is needed okay so we are continuing with our i mean uh, suggestions or recommendations for maintaining positive thinking people who acquire negativity in their lives are pessimistic and pessimistic people more likely to fall sick compared to optimistic people this is one of the insights produced by the medicine medical field where actually pessimism not only keeps you on um, in a different mode all the time it also leads to a kind of a medical condition for example people who always feel sick and they will actually fall sick okay positive thinking is the key to good mental health when you think positively you can see your life full of possibilities and you are less depressed he life is an opportunity and the way you see depends on how are you seeing it at okay so you can see this engineering course or something which can create a wonders for in your life that's one way or somebody may see it as a burden because they have joined the course for whatever the reason whether it's theirs or others okay so the same course can be seen by different people and if you are looking at a positive thing then this four years could be a foundation for you and then you can take and it can give you a kind of a fly start just in the profession so that should never you should be working optimistic people cultivate positive results in every situation either they take it humorously or they will take it whatever the little that comes after the defeat in a match or something like that for example whenever a captain loses a match in the they say okay there are some positive things from that some of our players players played very well we came very close to the victory and that so that is that which is needed this is true not only in sports whether you are in the politics whether you are in profession whether you are in business focusing on positive thoughts rather than negative will be one or less predisposed to depression distress and other forms of mental distraction so it's a, it's, it's a very fairly sophisticated and complicated mental things are mindful thing that actually have an impact so a single minute of depression or a distress can cause you lot of problems when optimists do become depressed they are more likely to recover more see it is like there is a quality called resilience so if you drop a stone actually on the ground no it will go and stay there but if you drop a ball a ball actually it will come up the reason is that it has a quality called resilience that means even if it is dropped then it has an ability to come up okay and that is very important optimist convert challenges into opportunities and make them happy and full of life that is important see whether something is a challenge or a opportunity depends on how you look at it. so if you are an optimistic you see okay okay this may be a beginning of a new opportunity But if you are a pessimist or pessimist, you say, okay, okay, this is one more burden that I have to face. Okay, so here is one suggestion to start your morning routine. Um, how to create your best morning routine? Reflect on the day ahead. That means you just get up early in the morning. No, if not early morning, some ten minutes earlier than usual, and then reflect. That means what are going to happen today? Maybe if you are a student, you so okay. These are things that have an academic engagement. Maybe there is a lab. Maybe there is a theory. Maybe there is an assignment. There is a lab kind of a thing. Or if you are a professional, okay, there are a couple of meetings that I have to do, or maybe there are certain software that I have to develop, or there are some clients that I have to meet. smile at yourself in the mirror this is an important because you should like both yourself and your face do not do the power posing that means this is something kind of a pose that you say that you are great as something like that do or think of something that makes you happy okay whatever it could be reading a novel i mean reading a joke or reading a quotation whatever that you do make a healthy breakfast this is important on the way to work listen to a podcast and this is an important maybe people who stay in campus may not have this privilege but if you are traveling or by your college bus and all you try to listen to a podcast podcast is a is a uh, is a program published on uh, youtube and other things where actually you listen to somebody or you actually uh, listen to some kind of a music and all that will actually help you give information and inspiration think three things that will do today and make sure that you do them so this is also important many times time passes just like that So, if you have some kind of a target, let me finish these three things. Maybe I'll get my registration card in library. Maybe I'll get my passport. I mean, apply for passport today, or maybe I will get complete these notes. 
Okay, that is also important. So this is whole it is. So the whole message that we are trying to drive in is actually health is important and there are thankfully ways to get it. So uh, let me stop for a minute and check uh, how, if you have any questions, then I will try to answer them. So far, we actually talked about health and what is the relation between health and different the fitness, mental health, physical, spiritual health. Then we come to a state. The result of healthy person is actually is called wellness. Wellness means actually it's like wealth. Okay. See, you you have you have something which actually earn you money, but that money, that cash is part of something called wealth. So wealth is something which determines your overall attitude. Similarly, when you are healthy, if you that some total of that health actually is actually is the wellness. That means if you are well, how are you? If you say I'm doing well, that well is actually wellness. Okay. Well, you cannot choose his state of health. For example, I told you the other day, actually, there is a person called Stephen Hawking has a couple of challenges for his health. He can't hear, he can't walk, he can he can talk and all. So that is something which is not given to him. You can consciously choose wellness. That means in spite of that with the help of all medical solutions that he has been living. Similar something happens to us. We may be born with good health, maybe some shortcomings in our health, but that is not something that we can choose. So you can consciously choose wellness by leading your life responsibly and taking proactive steps towards that. What it means is, if you are healthy, start enjoying it. You are already have a wellness. But if you are not there, figure it out what are the lacunas or what are the shortcomings and start working towards overcoming them. Health comprises uh, comprise of diagnosis of disease or illness. That means when you start your journey of assessing your health, you should first go for diagnosis. That means what is actually causing problem. Okay. And then it could be as simple as actually you have some short sight, um, sight problem. You have to go to an optician and get a spectacle for that. Or you have a, some kind of a pain or a back pain and all that you can also overcome. I mean, that is what is called diagnosis. And any unexpected injury, maybe you fall while getting down the steps, or maybe you are, you are fell when you are playing a game, or if you fall from a small accident and all. So what it actually, you start assessing your health status right now. Okay. Maybe you are already healthy, then you have problems like I told you, sight, where you have to go to an optician and get that. Okay. Wellness is an active process of growth and change to reach your fullest health and well-being. This is important. Now when health is a requirement, wellness is an achievement. That means now that you have all the resources, you are start enjoying. That is called wellness. It is like see, you have all the ingredients, but then you have to cook before you can eat. Similarly, you have all the healthy issues with you and all, all healthy things and aspects with you. Then wellness is a consequence of that. And it is that is wellness is associated with actively perceived activities, making choices and lifestyle changes, controlling the risk factors. So that means now you should control. It means actually you have a habit to actually you are sleeping only less than six hours then it should change it or maybe you are watching too much of tv or mobile then you have to change it maybe you are eating not so nutritious food maybe you are going for junk food then you stop it okay so these are what we control in group factors that can harm a person focusing on nutrition having a balanced diet as i already told following the spiritual practices that lead to holistic health so this is again a lifelong project so it's not it starts today and ends today. It is a lifelong project. What actually happens is that once that you know health is important, you know that there are ways to get it, starting from the meditation to our mindfulness to our jogging to our going to a gym and all. Then you come to a next stage called health wellness, where actually it is your job to enjoy the health that you have. And if you don't have, start your journey to diagnosis and figure it out what causes this health challenges and how you overcome that. So here are basic definition of that. Health means absence of both physical and mental diseases. Okay, that means you, it's like see, health, something like see, before you become wealthy, you actually get rid of all your loans and debts. Okay, something like that. Okay. Wellness, wellness is on the other hand, is the state of living healthy lifestyle. So now this is your foundation and this is your actually activity state. That means this is your investment and this is your actually shopping or something like that. 
Now that we have talked about what is health and what is healthness and actually and how to get a health, now there are things that actually can affect your health and that those are called risk factors. That means eat, sleeping less is a risky factor. Eating uh, junk food is a risky factor. Okay. Risk factors are those actions, the condition that increase person's risk to illness or injury. For example, rash driving can cause you an accident or actually too much of eating junk food, I told you, cause some of the health issues. Some of the risk factors that can be harmful to good health are as follows. Smoking, which seems to be a gaining in people today. And smoking is a major risk factor that lung cancer and cardiovascular diseases. Okay, more every year more and more people die due to smoking than actually on the road accidents. Drinking alcohol that has seems to have picked up as a fashion. Okay, that can cause liver damage, stroke, heart disease, and cancer. You need to avoid them. Okay, unprotected sex is something people seem to be becoming liberal these days. Okay, a libertarian, what they call actually, they are open and that is actually causing problem. Okay, extreme physical activity and sports. Sometimes people unduly pressure them in, in an anticipation of a, an achievement. For example, they want to participate in a sports event or they want to uh, get selected for a team, and that is also causing problems. So risk factors are those which work against an individual. Which which are harmful for him? Okay, so which are there? Smoking, poor nutrition, obesity, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. Maybe most of you may not have reached this stage, but once you are in profession, there are factors. Good factors are exercise, healthy eating, control weight, controlling cholesterol, and actually and medical screening. These are the good medical screening is actually a process I told you here. Diagnosis. That means you need to get a medical opinion about overall health of your status okay so any any question at this point of time i'll give a minute or two to you so so far we talked about mental health and how to get it and what are the factors we should avoid to maintain it and then how do you start our journey of mental, mental medical screening or a diagnosis so that we can find out the deficiency or, show, or shortcomings in our health and get that help. Now we'll move up and say that um, we'll get into other aspects of our health. So those are actually include emotion, intellect, psychological, physiological and spiritual. So while we exist physically and we can only see a physical things, there are much more dimension to our mind and life than actually being physical and um, mental. So the first actually is the emotion. Emotion is subjective state of mind, reaction to an internal or external stimuli. Maybe you heard um, Dhoni saying that we are Indians and we are actually controlled by emotions. So emotions are very personal and they come and go with, uh, with, with very firm and very immediately a person and you are locating those images and controlling is a thing. For example, anger is an emotion. Okay, that's an emotion. Intellect is a person's mental ability, reasoning and understanding objectively. Now you look at a world, then you try to understand it. What is the problem? What is the challenge? What is the solution? So that part of your mind is called intellect. In fact, intellectual means something who can use intelligence to look at the world and solve the problem or work out with the problem. For example, intellectual property rights like patents, copyrights and all. No, they, are, uh, they are sourced from or they start here psychological arising from the mind see we all have mind and this mind is largely conditioned that means we are born somewhere we have grown somewhere we have studied somewhere and all the events and all the things that have happened during those years actually has conditioned our self our life and psychological things actually are important because many a times you don't know which factor is acting which makes you happy or which makes you dull or which makes you anger which makes you arrogant Physiological are related to body, it could be maintaining like water level, dehydration, all those things are something like say hemoglobin levels and all. Okay. And spiritually something which is uh, which is not very visible, but people seem to be gaining this this related to solar human spirit, non non-material and physical things. That means this is both spiritual means you, you can be a spiritual with your devotional things, or you may be spiritual with your life. Okay. So these are the four broad things. One is actually physical, which is a foundation. So if you are living, then only all these things would happen. Then there is spiritual, there is social, there is intellectual and emotional. So what we are trying to tell in this particular slide is actually, apart from knowing what is health, 
and apart from knowing what you to do what you have to do to maintain that health and also apart from the, knowing that what is that you should be doing the risk factors then there are different layers of your health they start from emotion intellect psychological physiological and spiritual okay so with this actually we come to a, a formal way of actually defining health so what is health so health is a state of complete physical and mental and social spiritual well being so well being already told you well being is a consequence of good health and this constitute a couple of things complete physical that means you have no physical challenges okay mental challenges you know how stress and you are not depressed and you are social that means you are very good with your family members friends classmates and neighbors and spiritual that means you also get connected to some higher powers of that exist in this world maintaining body as much as possible both in terms of ability to do certain things and also its health following daily advice and preventive measures to reduce possibility of diseases we have told you avoiding those risk factors whether it's over sports or over training or avoid missing food items nutrition so health is essentially a state that means state is actually a condition for example what we mean state means all the factors are working towards so that actually you are existing the health is a combination of physical mental emotional and health okay health is a dynamic that means it keeps changing maybe you are healthy at 10 o'clock this morning and you may be falling sick by 11:30 that means there's a change and again by 1 o'clock in the afternoon you will be back okay so that thing is called dynamic okay are subject to constant change okay that means you i told you there's a variation you may have something at 10 o'clock 10:30 different 11 o'clock different it, you can be depending on that okay that's called it's a dynamic your health is at any point is a point of the health continuum which ranges from high level of health to a premature death it could these are the two serious things okay think means you can be enjoying 100% of health at one time and you may end up in a disaster the following moment so here after we have the background of what is health why how to maintain and all we are talking about what is health is a state of mind okay is a state of mind it's a state where actually mental physical psychological health come together and make you healthy this is again a definition from another source uh, can be state of complete physical daily advice health is an important feeling happy that's important now we are taking it to another one okay so health is actually a basis of your happiness happy people are normally healthy okay and even if they are not healthy they, the fact that they feel happy would actually make them their health conditions much better health is an important in feeling happy physical fitness is on so for example if you have a little pain maybe due to Uh, an injury and all you see how difficult it is to be happy at that okay health is a state and which i already covered now there are agencies in the world because health is an issue of an international importance now we have something called world health organization which has defined this okay defines health as, as two different concepts the health as state of complete physical mental and social well being and not merely absence of disease or infirmity infirmity is anything like uh, physical handicap or some kind of a blindness and all okay so it is not lack of something but it is something of i mean which exists in you who that is world health organization defines the optimal state of health of individual optimum you know it is a state where actually you get much 100% returns for your uh, investment optimal for example if you are doing a business and you can get a profit of 2 rupees or 20 rupees but there is a level say 18 rupees where it's optimal that means that that table every investment of yours is actually returning the most possible uh, profit for you okay and wellness is expressed as a positive approach to our living health is a goal and wellness is the active process of achieving it so health is a goal that means i should win world cup that is your goal okay wellness is actually preparation net practice whatever that no health without wellness so health health is the foundation of wellness and wellness is a both state of mind where actually you can't start enjoying enjoying life so in this slide we are talking about a definition given by an international organization who world health organization which says the definition okay and it is um, health is a state of complete physical okay now i did the ability to lead socially and economically productive life this is important today we have a new program called national education program which says that our ability to contribute to the society is an important component for that you should 
lead a socially and economically productive lab. That's you have to be a professional at whatever level, maybe a designer, maybe an engineer, maybe a professional doctor, but then you have to be here. So earlier the limit uh, the definition of health was limited to an individual status. Now actually it is extended to socially and economical. So that you should be noted. Coming back to this, uh, in spite of all this, actually people actually ignore health. And uh, the earlier day I told you, showed you an example of our Lakesh Jinjin Warma. He was one of the most uh, rich and successful stockbroker in India. But then he did not take care of health. And that's exactly what he says. The yes investor said that my worst investment has been my health. And I would encourage everybody to invest in that most. That means it is a kind of an advice to the whole nation. And especially for young people like you, who for some reason thinking that you are healthy and you don't have to worry, you have all the protection that is needed, but that's not a fact. You need to be very careful in that. And that's exactly what it's told here. So what we have covered so far is actually what is health, why is it important, how to get a good health from certain practices and how to avoid certain things which will actually cost you or cause damage to your health. Then how do you create wellness or how do you enjoy wellness based on your health and certain definition of health by company in an organization like WHO and also a warning from the um, Rakesh Junjunwala who was the, he, uh, who was one of the greatest investors in India and when he was when he died sometime back a couple of months back he had a net worth of about 21,000 crores but then you know <laughs> as he said something he was not a good investor in health that took him early to die okay so we'll continue our journey with wellness. Okay, wellness gets firmly associated with health and prevention. So that means you are healthy, you are enjoying wellness. And as a well wellness person, you are also trying to avoid any or prevent anything which will actually cause that ill health. Okay, wellness is the state of quality of being healthy. Okay, well being, well being becomes more associated with happiness, and well being is the state of being healthy, happy, and successful. Okay, now this is a, a kind of a ladder. So you start with health then you become well, you get wellness. Then after wellness, you actually become happy. And once you are becoming happy, then it becomes actually successful. So successful person need happiness and happiness actually comes from wellness and wellness is actually founded on health. So health, uh, health well-being of your body, mind, relationship with others. So it starts with your physical fitness, then psychological, then mental, then spiritual, then with your body and then with the extendedly to your friends and others. Okay. What is quality of life? Quality of life is a degree of overall satisfaction that the person gets from his life. For example, you feel that my, what is my quality of life? Maybe a professional in Bangalore will find that his quality of life not as good because he has to spend two hours in travel and in congested traffic and he has, his work is very stressful and all. So your notion about quality of life is very personal, but then you will know that whether you are living a good quality of life or not. And another question, what is wellness? Wellness, an overall state of well-being and total health. This is actually again a continuum. That means, it, as I told you earlier, health is a continuous thing and it's a continuum. That means it is not, it exists at 10 o'clock and only at 2 o'clock. It exists between from 10 to 2 all the time. So wellness is actually a, a, a ladder you start with health, then you are well-being, and then you are happiness, and then you are successful. So now, what are the things that actually can go against your wellness or health? Okay, Risk factors of illness or injury. Risk factors are actions and conditions that increase person's risk. Okay, These are some of the known tobacco, smoking, boozing, drugs, non-hygienic, that means taking not care of hygienic, not taking bath every day and not taking some kind of a, a preventive measures, extreme physical fitness activities, negligence, adulterated food, okay, improper diet and nutrition. So these things actually go against um, your uh, health. So if you're already healthy, don't do that. If you're already unhealthy, certainly don't do that. Okay. So what is the risk factor? Here is a small definition. Any action or condition that increases likelihood of injury, disease, or other negative outcome, it make you injury or it can make you ill, that factor is called risk factor. Example, swimming after dark. So this looks silly, but very important. See, suppose you have a like a river or a 
or a kind of a pond in your town or in your place, then risking after I mean, uh, swimming, trying to swim after dark, this is a problem because you don't know what is the danger in that. Okay, and using tobacco. Uh, three types of risk factor hereditary many times some factors will actually come from your parents also so that we will not be considering here but then if they are there they will pop up sometime during your life and actually may attack you but that we will ignore environmental risks like traffic jams pollution behavioral risk for example how you behave that means what you eat what you don't eat what you um, bad habits that you pick up that are only risk factors so here we talked about risk factors related to your illness that means what causes a health issue so then we come to a deeper study of wellness wellness i told you is well-being uh, well-being is actually a state of um, mind and physical state where actually you are enjoying everything so it has three couple of dimensions okay one is actually physical so physical wellness is increased by physical fitness that means you feel comfortable to sit you feel comfortable to walk if you comfortable to run okay by being physically fit a person would have an enhanced ability to prevent illness and disease so physical fitness is a foundation okay so if you are physically fit then the chances of you getting illness are different very less are you getting tired are you are not able to participate in time is actually very less exercise stimulates healthy mind and body so any physical Streaming activities, maybe it's jogging, maybe walking, maybe yoga will help you. A sedentary life can avoid it by increasing physical activity in every living life. Some people are introverts, they stay in their own rooms, they stay in their own house. And that kind of a life is called sedentary. And even in the modern day, if you go to an industries like IT and all, then there are jobs which are very sedentary. If you are a programmer or a developer, all the time you are working alone in terms of a machine or in terms of a screen and all. So that will cause certain of problems. One is at mental level stress and all. Physically, it actually removes physical activity, you see, uh, and you put up weight and all. Okay. So that is important. So physically, fitness is also important. Having good nutrition, eating balanced diet, drinking sufficient water, eight glasses per day, and getting adequate sleep. These are the things. So the first dimension of wellness is physical. So you should get it. So how do you get it? Uh, through good habit of exercises, food, and rest <clears throat> so dimensions of the wellness again continuous physical okay physical wellness increases physical fitness by being physically fit so below are the steps for improving physical wellness exercise three times a week 20 to 30 minutes per session so it is not possible either as a student or the professional to be given time enough to either gym or exercise every day so you can do it twice a week maybe monday wednesday and friday or something like that so 20 to 30 minutes it could be a small job or could be a walk use the stair instead of elevator or escalator and walk whenever possible so people now become accustomed to vehicles so much that even if the shop is about say 100 meters they take their two wheelers and all they have just got accustomed to that similarly in an in an apartment and all even their houses are second or third floor they still use the lift okay if you can avoid them it is a great thing because that will put you all the time in a good body shape Use stairs instead of that one. Get consistent and adequate sleep. Learn to recognize early signs of illness. Listen to your body. Eat breakfast. Many a times, at, at least in my college, I have seen since we started 8 o'clock, many people skip um, breakfast for a simple reason that they didn't wake up early enough to get that. Okay. It's the most important meal. And people say, actually, if you don't take protein in the morning, whatever you attend classes or whatever you learn, whether a program or other, or other professional, it looks like your memory is fresh, but then for a period of time, it is not actually stored in your, this one is not registered. So it's a must thing that you should have a breakfast and come here. Applying and skill nutrition, exercise and safety to your body may raise ability to live physically fit. <clears throat> it is one thing to see this slide and um, get bored, but it's another thing that you learn this and start practicing. So, like I told you, like um, swimming, driving and others programming, Health is something which comes out of practice, not by reading or looking at healthy, other healthy people. So, for that reason, what we are trying to stress in this is, you know all this, you all this, but then very few people actually start practicing it. For that reason, make it a habit, like a small exercise once in a week or I mean, thrice a week, and also applying that knowledge. Knowing is one thing, but doing is another thing. So, most people fail to make that jump. Most, most of the society knows all the good things about health, everything, 
but then they don't practice. Much of, many of the doctors know that smoking is bad, but they are leading uh, group which actually smoke. So this actually is a kind of a contradiction. So you should be applying those knowledge to get skills in, in action. So earlier we have finished what is called physical, then we are getting into um, intellectual. Intellectual is mental. That means much of your profession today depends on your intellectual ability called IQ and all. So as a placement officer, I can tell you, when companies come, they say, do what you call aptitude test. And aptitude test is nothing but intellectual. So uh, the dimension of wellness include mental exercise and engagement through learning, problem solving, creativity, support, intellectual wellness, and promote a better attitude. It could be solving a puzzle or it could be solving a word game and all. But you should be all the time alert. And you know, it is the alertness and regular practice which will keep your mind up and down. People who learn new things and challenges, they can avoid mental health problems. For example, somebody learning a new language, somebody is learning a new skill, somebody learning a new sports actually keeps his mind very healthy and very intellectual. Emotional is something which is, I told you, emotion is an important thing. And for, as the captain said, actually, um, emotion, we thrive on emotion. Emotional thing is important. A person with emotional wellness and can deal with stressful situation. A person who is aware of their own feelings has a good self-esteem and a empathy towards others. Feelings should have an emotional wellness. The emotional is a, another component. Emotion, I told you, is something which comes from inside your mind. Maybe you can trace it down or you may not be knowing, but it comes like anger or affection or love and other things. That you should also be balanced. Dimension of wellness. We are continuing with that environmental. Environmental means now that we have stopped, completed your body, both your mind and intellectual, physical and all, now we get into the outside world, it's called environmental. So environmental awareness of the role we play in improving our natural environment. We know we are part of a bigger or a larger audience called society. While we are important, our contribution to them are also important. So our environmental awareness tells you that awareness of the role we play in improving our natural environment rather than denigrating it and maintaining it and living in a healthy physical environment free of hazards and uh, promotes wellness. What it means is actually now you are an engineer. How will you contribute towards the uh, wellness of the society? That is an important. Okay. There are things that you can do to damage yourself. Similarly, there are things that you do which can damage your environment. For example, we are using more and more plastic all the time, and that is causing a kind of a pollution, I mean, environmental problem. We are using more and more petrol, that is also causing. Maybe it's one vehicle we are using, but in some total, it will cause problem. So environmental is actually helps you to understand what is your role in maintaining the status of a good condition for the environment by your contribution. And next one is actually social. Social would mean anything that you get related with other people. Maybe your friends in your hostel, or maybe your classmates, or maybe your <coughs> faculty, or maybe your mentors, or your family members. Okay. Social circles and support networks are invaluable to the overall well-being of a person. Relating, interacting, and contributing to a community, establishing a good interpersonal relationship, and maintaining a long-term relationship with family and friends keep person happier and healthier. <coughs> Excuse me. So social is also, for example, we are, in fact, humans are called social animals. That means we can talk. That's the reason we can communicate. And that's the reason actually we have all these communities, community, nations, everything has come because of this aspect. So you should be taken care. So what we have done in this particular slide is simple. So wellness has different dimensions. While we are studied early, like physical, um, mental now we are talking about environmental and social and you can look at this different physical you already covered intellectual emotional okay social occupation is something which comes from your profession for example if you are a doctor and you have to take additional care to be there because that's one of the most sedentary jobs you have to sit on a chair to, i mean uh, to give consultation to hundreds of um, patients every day or if you are a driver or if you are a pilot, then there are other occupational challenges. Financial that you know and environmental and these are the different dimensions. Okay, I think this I can skip because 
um, uh, this is again the same definition that we are getting. The enjoyment of the highest attainable standards of health is one of the fundamental rights of every human being. <coughs> this is very important. See, we only, when we talk about constitution of India, we talk about fundamental rights, right to property, right of free speech and all. We, but these are all external. What is fundamental is, is this. The enjoyment of the highest attainable standards of health is one of the fundamental rights of every human being without distinction of race, religion, political, economic and social. This is not part of our constitution. This is very personal thing that you should be attaining. So highest kind of health, that means physically fit, mentally fit, emotionally fit, socially fit, environmentally fit. The health of all peoples is fundamental to the attainment. For example, unless everybody else is healthy, you cannot be healthy. We learned this during pandemic. If somebody is infected, everybody is at risk. Okay. So now health is actually a more of a social thing also. So environmental health is there. You are healthy human health and all the animal health. That means if, if in fact, as you know that the pandemic started with one of the rats in, in China. No, actually rat or pig in China, which actually created a pandemic throughout the world. So a missing link in a chain actually causes or makes the chain very useless. Similarly, one of the aspects of the health is actually you should take care of your health and also ensure that the environment is also healthy enough. So, uh, before actually I get into the principles, uh, I just give you a minute time to check out any questions if you want to ask, you can ask me. Or if you want to specifically suggest anything, you can do that. Okay, I give two minutes for you. So while we stressed uh, what you should be doing to care of, take care of your health, being what it is, health is a national, international, world level problem. So we have a World Health Organization will take care and they have come up with the principles to maintain health, like environmental challenges, health challenges are a big thing. So we are taking the achievement of any state in promotion and protection of health value to all. So um, un unequal development in different countries in the promotion of health and control of disease, especially communicable disease is a common danger. That means, that's what, before pandemic, we thought that America is safe, India is safe. But then pandemic taught us that nobody is safe because if there is one disease coming in one country, in one corner of the world, it will actually affect all of us. Something that is true of pollution, that is true of actually the global warming. So health is something which is a global phenomenon. If somebody is ill, one of the other way, he will affect us, okay. Healthy development of the child is a basic importance. So one of the best ways to start this movement of healthy society is to start with the basic I mean, babies or actually kids. So that actually now we can take all the precautions like vaccination and all, then make them so healthy that they can have a longer life and a healthier life all through their life. The extension of all people's health benefits like medical, uh, medical means hospitals, psychological assistance, other things is essential to the fullest attainment of health. So you, you here you recognize that everybody needs health and somebody's illness is actually everybody's concern. And then healthy development should start when kid when, when somebody is kid. And the extension of people of beneficial of medical and psychological. This could mean anything, physical hospital facilities, consulting facilities, and all. Okay. Government have a responsibility for the health and their people's can be fulfilled only through provision of adequate health and social measures. So in a sense, actually health becomes a fundamental right and it is fundamental duty of a person to maintain his health and it is a fundamental <coughs> right of the and duty also of the government or the state to ensure that everybody has access to every kind of a resource which is needed to maintain a healthy life. Okay. 
so individual you should be accessible actionable creditable relevant and other things okay this is what so why are we studying this there is an organization called who which actually has set up these principles according to them there are different kind of a health for example there is physical health public health is this is what called public health department we have so the people who actually conducted all the <coughs> the vaccination during pandemic they are public health physical health is for an individual mental health is for an individual social is for the society okay intellectual health is for an individual occupational health is for a professional spiritual health for everybody including the yogis and all environmental health is the kind of a cause for example we are polluting air through our petrol engines we are actually polluting through our plastic so mental and physical health are probably the two most frequently discussed type spiritual emotional and financial health contribute to overall health so if you are facing some financial challenges that will have impact both on your physical and mental health okay medical experts have linked this to their lower stress level and improved mental status for well being that means if you take care of all this then the chances of you are healthy and the society is healthy is very high physical health is the second or next one a person who has good physical health is likely to have a bodily functions processes working at their peak and is due to absence of disease that means he can walk he can lift he can run and he can participate he can sit comfortably regular exercise balanced nutrition adequate rest contribute to good health that means now if you are lucky enough to good health then there are things that you have to do to ensure that you are healthy all your life and people receive medical treatment maintain balance when necessary maybe you fall sick maybe you fall you may be get injured that time it can be avoided i mean it can be provided physical well being is pursuing healthy lifestyle to reduce the risk of disease so at the bottom level you to you should take your physical health as a important thing so what are the three pillars of physical health physical activity like walking jogging and all nutrition good food and sleep so among the important things that you should take there are three thing physical health uh, it should be taken care by sleep nutrition and all and if you look at the current generation these are all both problems they eat more of junk food and they don't sleep regularly they don't sleep early and other things that you have to and uh, note and start using this knowledge okay maintaining a physical fitness breathing heart function maybe you are doing a kind of a meditation pranayama for this okay muscular strength flexibility body composition is important looking after physical health and well being also involves reducing the risk of injury health as issue as such as minimizing hazards in the workplace practicing effective hygiene see one of the things actually is this there are some hazards for example if you have traveled in metros in either in bangalore or bombay and all so you get keep getting the message mind the gap while you are alighting mind the gap we are getting it okay so the reason why they keep stressing is many of the accidents happened in the past because people did not notice that they used to put their leg between that concrete and the train and get caught so that actually they will end up in an accident so this kind of a thing is very common maybe when you are uh, mean, uh, going through a staircase the steps actually there are problems that you will end up in a in, in getting an injury so that is also important so you sh- while you are taking care of your nutrition sleep for a physical you should also ensure that you, you don't end up in a dangerous thing while you are having a physical activity like getting into a bus getting from the a- airport or getting into Uh, house and other things and there is a inter relation between uh, physical and mental health that means good physical health normally leads to good mental health and any changes in the mental health that actually will affect your physical health and now we are going deeper into this connection between physical and mental health good physical health can work in tandem tandem means together with the mental health to improve person's overall quality of life so you cannot be physically ill and still enjoy the life or you can be physically strong but not so strong in mental and still enjoy they should come together and create a conditions for happiness then only you can enjoy for example mental illness such as depression may increase the risk of drug use disorders according to a 2018 I mean 2008 study this can go to adversely affect the physical health so if you are dull depressed maybe you fall into a kind of a habit like a drug or an alcohol and that will cause your physical problem so 
mental and physical health, they go hand in hand. Going deeper, we will talk about this mental health. Mental health refers to a person's emotional, social and psychological health. We already listed this. Mental health is an important, as important as physical health as part of life, active lifestyle. That means, yes, the precondition is physical, but that is where the, the nervous story ends. It actually starts there, then it moves on to what we call mental health. It is harder to define mental health than physical health because many psychological diagnoses depend on individual perception of their experience. See, in terms of physical health, it is easy to diagnose. For example, you can go to a doctor and he can say you have an eyesight problem because it's very physical. Or you can say you have a less of a hemoglobin or you have a sugar I mean, diabetes. But whereas mental, uh, mental conditions no, they are very difficult because it depends on the person's perception. Okay, what he says. Okay, so four things you should know about mental health. Sadness and depression are not signs of weakness. So when you feel sad, when you feel depressed, they are nothing to do with your health. Okay, and that doesn't make you weak. So they are only state of your mind at that moment. Feeling sad is not always bad. You may feel bad because you lose a game or you lose your ice cream or you lose a bus. Okay, you miss a bus. You feel sad is not something dangerous. It is okay to talk to your child about death and suicide. So if you are a parent or you end up with a person who actually is feeling bad and all, you can talk about them. Mental illness is not always a component of a violent behavior. Somebody, well, but what most people say actually, much of the violence today happens because those people who are violent today, they had actually a very violent upbringing or the childhood. So that's, a, that's also a thing which is noted. But then it is possible that talk to a, such people and mm, create a condition for good mental health for them also. Good mental health is not only categorized by the absence of depression, anxiety, disorder. It also depends on your personal ability to enjoy life. See, after all, we have human life, which is one of the greatest fortunate thing to happen to us. And the ultimate result or the ultimate gift or the price of this life is enjoying life. Okay, enjoy life, bounce back after a difficult experience and adapt. For example, if you are a player, you lose a tournament, but don't don't be at that point all the time. You just come up back and say that, okay, there's another trophy to win, another match to win. Okay, you should bounce back. Balance different dimension of life, such as family and finances. If you are a professional, then you have you take a lot of time in your profession. For example, the founder of uh, Infosys Narayan Murthy now says that he regrets that he did not spend enough time with his kids because in his busy days, sometimes he used to be out of home for nearly 11 or almost 11 or uh, more than 11 months uh, in, on a business trips and all. Okay, so that balancing is also needed. There's no point in regretting later in life. You just look at this position and see if you can avoid such mistakes. Feel safe and secure, achieve their full potential. This is important. Is actually now you have some potential. You can be a great player representing India. You can be a great entrepreneur creating the, a good enterprise which creates economic benefit for the country. Or you may be a great artist, you can perform at a national level. Or you can be a great singer who can be a, you can become a playback singer. Or you may be a good designer. So that full potential should be realized. And that's another important thing. Enjoying life is anything, but getting your talents or your hidden uh, entities get an expression is also very important. Again, there is a kind of triangle between social, physical and mental health. That's what actually says. A chronic illness affects person's ability to complete their regular tasks. It may lead to depression. For example, if you are physically challenged, for example, if you are a running nose, then you will not be able to complete, a, say, for example, a particular assignment. And that actually negatively affects your health status. Okay. Look at this. Physical has direct relation with mental, then it has social. So there is a health triangle. So any change in this will affect the other two. A mental illness such as depression or anoxuria can affect body weight and overall function. That means the depressed people become lean, they become weak, they become anemic, and all those things that would happen. Here. So let me summarize here at this point of time. Okay, uh, it is important to approach health as a whole rather than as a series of separate factors. It's a complete package. Your physical will affect your mental, mental will affect your emotion, emotion will affect your spiritual and other things. All types of health are linked 
and people should aim for overall and well-being and balance as they keep to good health. Okay. So let me summarize on the other side. Multi-dimensional definitions of health, including holistic health, have existed for decades. Although the primary emphasis has been always the physical dimension. So people used to say, okay, he is he looks so healthy physically, so he must be all the time I mean, fully healthy. It is not the thing all the time. Current multi-dimensions of health may include many or all of the following: physical, emotional, social, and spiritual, and occupational. These are the things. Okay. Uh, any any question at this point of time? I will give three minutes time for you to uh, ask question. Otherwise, I will continue with this. Yeah, let me continue. <clears throat> now we will ask a couple of questions like why health is so important. Health is body's functional and metabolic efficiency. That means you look at a vehicle. Vehicle should be in a position to move every time you want to go it. So its health would mean actually its ability to take you anywhere. Similarly, health is the body's functional and metabolic efficiency. That means functional. You can kick, you can lift, you can think, you can see. These are all functional things. And metabolic. That means you can eat food, digest them, and level, maintain level of certain parameters. And its ability to adapt to the physical, mental, and social changes that are it is expected to. For example, if you are healthy, you are a good student because you can study well. Okay, if you are healthy, then you are a good citizen because you can respond to the government department. I mean, demand. Similarly, if you are healthy, then if you are a professional, then you can do that. So health would mean you are physically fit, emotionally fit, metabolically fit. So that you, whatever we expected from you, you can you can be delivering. For example, you can be a soldier who want your services to be there on the border, or you can be a programmer whose services are needed by the company. Health is opposite of disease, and also means the safety of the body from physical, social, and mental disorders. Health is a factor that helps person to perform its daily life task in a correct and a right way. This is also important. For example, for much of the age, old uh, age people, no old people, they need somebody's support. So they are health non. They are not healthy in the sense that they can't take uh, action. I mean, they cannot fulfill their own requirements. So health also means that you are able to stand on your own. A person's physical health means that the body does not have any disease or uh, in any part of the body and safety and all the all the all its membranes. Okay. While mental and social health is represented by the ability to accomplish social tasks entrusted to him without defect or error. For example, I ask you to do certain thing, and if you are doing, that means you are healthy because you understand the situation, you know the solution, and you implement. Okay. So the importance of health actually is said here. Health is the combination of physical, mental, emotional, and social well-being, and it's very important. Health is a dynamic and are subject to constant change. I told you. You may be healthy at 10 o'clock, may not be healthy by 11 o'clock. Again, fully healthy by 1 o'clock. So it's a continuum. Okay. Okay. So the reason health is the body's functional and metabolic efficiency, and oh, okay, and why is the importance of health? Actually, health is well-being of your body, mind, and relationship with others. Okay. And the important is actually quality of life. So you need to be quality would be actually you enjoy at its top level. The importance of good health in person's life is undoubtedly great. How can you achieve good health? And uh, that's let us start. A healthy person is a person who is able to serve himself. That means he doesn't depend on anybody else. Okay. And now we are also talking about health literacy. See, back in 
14th, 15th century and all, there is nothing like literacy. Everybody was ignorant, I mean, illiterate only. But with the advent of book and book publishing, printing press and all, people become, I mean, more and more people started printing books and schools were started. So at that time, literacy would mean like reading and writing. But today, health literacy means that your ability to understand the health facts, their impact on your health, use those facts to build a good healthy practices and body for yourself. Okay. Now we are talking about the social health, the importance of social health. Social health is important even work, especially at work. For example, it's very rare that you stay all alone all your throat life. For example, you join a school, then you have to interact with your classmates and teachers, and you join a company, then you have to interact with your colleagues. Maybe you stay in an apartment, then you have to interact with your neighbors. So the importance of social health is very important. Okay, uh, Social health is important even at work. Building and maintaining healthy relationship brings contentment and success in your life. You have good friends, good relationship. Okay, Inter Emotional intelligence uh, helps you to relate to one another. You feel sympathetic, empathetic with others. EQ involves understanding others' emotions and appropriately responding while controlling our own emotion. That means you should understand the other person needs sympathy. You are treat him with compassion. Okay, um, empathy is a key. Take time to understand how other people feeling and why. So you don't think that the world is the way you are looking at. There are different dimensions to world, and you should be understanding them. Health is wealth, as you already know, and that is an important thing because. If you don't have health, even the other wealth actually will not help you much. Okay. Staying healthy has never been so important as the need to remain healthy to have a positive effect on almost every aspect of our life. Today, and actually another thing is actually, today any illness or medical problem is very expensive. For example, if you end up in some kind of a medical condition, go to hospital, they will, the bills will run in lakhs and thousands. Okay. So we have to be healthy. The reason actually uh, to mentally healthy and emotionally fit to improve heart functioning, to improve lung functioning, to lifestyle improvement. Okay. So staying fit can be done in variety of ways, including eating lean, healthy meats, along with plenty of fruits and vegetables. So the less you talk about, the more you talk about health, the less it is practiced. The reason is this actually people know everything but they don't practice. Okay, what are the benefits again? A healthy person is a person who is able to serve himself. That's important. The importance of health is it, it saves him from the cost of treatment. And this is I told you is very important. Today, if you go to a hospital and you for whatever the reason, the bills will run in thousands, sometimes even lakhs. Okay. So that you have to avoid. It's like say avoiding an accident. So illness is treated as an accident. Okay. So if you meet with an accident in a vehicle and if it goes for a servicing, it will cost you. Similarly, if somebody falls, a person falls and goes to a hospital, it will cost him a lot. Psychologically, healthy people are feel comfortable, happy in their lives and enjoy life. More important uh, health humana helps you to live longer. That's important. Once that you are born here, try to live as much as possible, 100 years, 150 years. Okay, Feel better about yourself and life insurance is cheaper. That means Life insurance today actually will take care of many things today, but then the point is that try to avoid uh, using that, but have one insurance because that comes as a back support for you. <clears throat> and another, I mean, another set of benefits actually lower levels of stress and anxiety. You may not feel, but large part of the population undergoes this stress and anxiety. Limit the desire for addictive substance. If you are healthy, you don't fall for alcohol. You don't fall for tobacco and all. So that's another thing. And also you don't fall for drugs. Better vision by healthy diet and cardiovascular exercise. Lower medical cost. Increase infertility. This is also important. See, you are born because your parents have decided to get you to this world. Okay. Similarly, it's your responsibility to get more and more people or through your kids to this society. You should contribute that. And if you are not healthy and if you have some practices, then that would actually reduce your fertility. You will not have kids. And then that is actually a kind of an emptiness in that. So that would actually will also be helpful if you maintain good health. And again, we are repeating how to achieve a good health, eating healthy meals, more vegetables, consuming appropriate amounts of water, about eight liters a day, 
regular exercises, avoiding obesity and losing extra weight, maintaining good hygiene, good enough sleep, prevent substance use. Substance use means drugs. Okay. Making better lifestyle choices like um, good sleeping habits, good health. Okay. Enough money. This is also important. Financial stability also gives you a lot of things. Okay. So there are some 10 goals that you can have. Eat healthy. Okay. Maintain ideal body weight. Okay. Don't be obese. Um, do aerobically fit. Okay. And be strong and lift weights. Develop a calm mind. Learn to prepare healthy meals. Okay. Learn self defense. The sixth one is important because many a times it so happens that you go for higher education to another country and all. There you don't have a cook. You don't have a family, family to support you. That time you should be able to make healthy meals. That means you should know combination ingredients and then complete an endurance event, play a sport, develop a long term, lifelong mindset. And now we will come to the things that now that you are taken care of, but there are things which actually try to upset your health. What are those factors? Those are called influence. Okay. Health and behavior. Okay. What, um, what influences your health? Early rise, long walks, everyday exercises, meditation, relaxation, fruits, nuts, water, vegetables, and grains. Okay. Health behavior refers to action that an individual engages. So that means you do certain things on a day to day. That is your health behavior. So behavior is something that you do. How do you interact with other things? So what are the, the things that you do for your health? It's called health behavior. And many people actually have healthy beliefs. For example, people say that English medicine is good. Okay, dry foods are good. Vegetables are good. Okay, they are true, but they are they have to work in a combination. Okay. So, what people believe about their health, what they think about constitutes them. According to some people, health is something they are always able. For some people, not having illness is a health. If you go to many of our people in the rural areas, they have a lot of health issues, but they don't go to doctor because they are somehow working on that. So, that is also important. Okay. So, uh, uh, you, they think that they are not vulnerable to diseases, for example, during the pandemic. Uh, and post-pandemic when vaccinations are, there are some villages uh, who reported that they actually tried to avoid getting vaccination because they thought that that health, I mean, the pandemic was actually due to some other reason, not a kind of a viral infection. And this is very important. See, advertisements in TV have become a great thing. So people actually start eating, I mean, I... <laughs> What is this pizza? And not because people started preparing in them, but it's are available in hotels. Okay. So food industry is advertising that targets um, youth have been linked to increase in the child obesity that I've already showed, shown you. So that's an important thing that you should be avoiding. The concept of good advertising makes us believe that something is better than actually is. So people, very, I mean, very clever people in the advertising, they give an impression that that is very good. For example, chocolate. The chocolate in a, in a, I mean, Right quantity is good, but actually if it is more and it causes childhood obesity and obesity is one of the greatest challenges for the modern world, including India. Adults who are socially active live longer and are healthier than their more isolated ones. Be social, be moving, be extrovert. Okay. Good health is an important enabler to positive family and community life. Okay. And that's important. And it enables people to participate and contribute in society in different ways. For example, if you are healthy, you can be a contributor, you can become an NGO member, or you can participate in certain things. So healthy has a two advantages. It keeps you happy and also it will help you, enable you to do certain things. So cultural patterns of define health. That means if you are born in a different place, then your attitude towards health would be different. Cultural standards of health change over time. That means what is good, for example, obesity is a big problem and now people are accepting that is the norm of the life that's not correct a society's technology affects people's health we know that how mobile tv vehicles are actually affecting because there are vehicles people are not working because that's the reason they are becoming obese, obese people and since they are watching too much of tv or sitting at home all the time they are picking over so there are two technologies one is the vehicle another one is actually mobile which is making more and more people obese 
again health and family is also important because a healthy person is not sufficient he should have a healthy family otherwise somebody's illness in a family also causes lot of problem and uh, you should also take care that everybody in your family uh, can <coughs> have both so when we say health and family are two things if you, everybody should be healthy and if somebody is not healthy the whole family should support him other things that which actually affect uh, person or I mean health is actually profession for example maybe you look at this actually if you are uh, and you care a sportsman and all there are many injuries they face actually there are other things they face similarly if you are in a very stressful job then you end up with bp sugar and other complaints okay so through its influence uh, uh, health and profession um, through its influence thoughts emotion behaviors and environments personality is one of the best uh, psychological predictors of physical health personality is measured using what is called big five framework there are things is that in the placement process also they use that so uh, the traits actually somebody may be realistic that means he will not have dreams he will have be realistic okay and somebody may be investigative that means he will suspect everything and check it out some may be artistic like a singer or a dancer okay some may be very social like a politician or a social worker enterprising somebody will start an invention company uh, and convention or somebody says i want a government job in certain okay that kind of thing so they also have an impact on your uh, social i mean your health this already told you depending on where you are if you are in a remote village then actually the health challenge will increase because you don't have access to medical facilities you may not have right information and all okay so that is health disparities adversely affect group people um, because in a society i told you they are so remote that doctors there are no hospitals doctors don't go there and they may not be economically good enough afford i mean uh, good enough to afford a treatment okay in india vulnerable groups of face discrimination include women scheduled caste scheduled tribes and aged people poor migrants and people actually migrants or other people migrating from say some of the indian states they stay in crowded cities like bombay and all then actually they also do not have access because they are kind of a people who are on the day and spend on the day and they don't have savings they don't have insurance that also causes lot of problems health psychology is the study of psychological and behavioral process in health illness and health so that means you have illness then your state of mind is different if you are healthy then your state of mind is different if you are a kind of a trauma you are met with an accident or if some of the kids or some of your relatives have died then actually that also create a trauma so health psychology is study of those three groups you are healthy your health is different you are ill your health is different it is concerned with the understanding of how psychological behavioral and cultural factors contribute to the physical health and illness that means what your illness cause contributes to your psychological health and what psychological state will actually contribute to your illness so there are couple of things biological which is physical social your relationship and psychological okay so psychological factors that uh, can help directly the goal of health psychology is to these are the things social psychological biological and this one okay now that uh, we know that psychology will affect there are some disorders that is the way injury physical injury is a problem with physical health okay trauma is that psychological stresses are there and they can be defined as any type of change that causes physical emotional or um, psychological strain stress is your body's response to anything that requires attention stress is actually a state for example when something is stressed that means there is an external force which is trying to suppress it and now it is has to overcome it psychological emotional and physical behavior okay disorders means illness type of stress that person can undergo one is called acute stress is a very short term type of stress that can either be positive or more distressing this type of stress can we most often encounter in day to day life for example you miss a bus you feel stressed so that's very temporary the next bus will come and you will get into that or you lose some money or you somebody pick pockets your money pocket then for a minute you do and you actually that anxiety will disappear maybe you go to hospital and you have an anxiety or you are attending an interview that kind of anxiety is um, created well, creates this stress chronic stress is a stress that seems never ending and is capable like 
the stress of a bad marriage or an extremely taxing job. If your job is like if you are a person who your job takes 10 or 20 or 30 hours um, uh, continuously working on the job, that will also cause a lot of stress and that's called chronic. Chronic means which is continuous. Episodic acute stress is, acute, this, uh, is kind of a stress that seems to run rampant in the way of life, creating a lifelong ongoing stress. If you are in a in any stressful like in a city like Metro and all, missing a bus is a stress, going to office is a stress, uh, working under a boss is a stress, okay, and uh, working a deadline is a stress, that is causes a problem. Erotic stress is a fun and exciting, that means there are some stresses which are actually helpful, okay. It is known as a positive type of stress that can keep you energized. It is associated with a surge of adrenaline, okay, such as when you are skying or skiing or meet a deadline. For example, you are excited, you are participating in a game. So then also you have a stress, but it is very positive and it will actually support you, okay. Good stress may be more effective in physical and psychological, for example, new car being selected as a class officer, okay, a new car. When you buy a new car, then actually you feel stressed, but then that's a good thing. Then what are the ways to stress, okay, then there are things actually, uh, you can spend time with nature, okay, do yoga or do exercises, have, get socialized, okay, manage your time, read books, okay, party, party practice art, think positive, okay. So learn to recognize the signs of burnout, high levels of stress may place you at a high risk, for example, either as a student, many times actually there are students who will feel burnout because there's a lot of stress in their academic work, but you have to take care of that. Burnout can leave you feeling exhausted, apathetic about job. After some of time of a burnout, you start hating your job or start hating your subject that you are causing that one. Okay, that you should ensure. Find a way to get handle on your stress. That means you recognize it and try to eliminate it. So what are the ways? Uh, take time to de-stress. Try to get regular exercises. Take care of yourself, that's important. As I told you, you are the best asset that you own and you should be a um, person who should be taking. You cannot let the rest of the world to take care of that. So you should be always focusing on that and access on that. So physical activity has a big impact on that. Uh, incorporating regular self-care is also important. Now we come to what we call mindfulness. This has some kind of a spiritual uh, roots, okay. Practice mindfulness in your life. Mindfulness is not just something to practice for 10 minutes a day. It can be a way of life. For example, the day you get up every day in the morning, you brush your teeth, have your coffee. Similarly, you also have a regular practice of mindfulness for 10 or 15 minutes that will help you. Earlier I told you journaling. If in case you are not able to concentrate, then you just start journaling so you can write something <coughs> which will reveal something about yourself and also the causes of stress and all. Mindfulness for spiritual, spiritual and intellectual health. This is also important. Over a period of time, people will feel that apart from physical mental health, you also need some kind of a spiritual orientation. So that will come handy if you do that. So mindfulness like meditation is one way of getting this one. So what it actually does is actually it will restore your childlike wonder. It improves your relationship and satisfaction, reduces stress. Okay, blosters your cognitive flexibility, may help you lower your blood pressure if you have, have that one, improves cognition and um, decreases your emotional reactivity and you don't get short tempered and all, okay, increases your empathy, helps manage chronic, boosts your immunity and this is important actually, it increases your blood pressure. Don't think that blood pressure is only there for uh, elder people, people in their 20s, 30s and 40s are also having this problem. So mindfulness actually will help you to overcome that. <clears throat> so a healthy lifestyle benefits, there are many, okay. For example, a healthy lifestyle can help you feel better, even better, I mean even better, you don't have to overall your entire life overnight. That means if you are all the time maintaining your vehicle, then you don't have to worry every visit to a mechanic is a routine. But if you are not taking care of your vehicle for a couple of years or a couple of months, then actually when you go there, it takes a lot of time, it is expensive and all. Something also similar with your health, so you should take it continuously, then you all the time you are up and running, okay. 
So some of the things that you can be positive thinking, you take vitamin enough, organic and all. What are the benefits? There are many. Okay, decreased risk of disease, though you don't fall sick to bring body back. That means after the rest or after vacation, you are back to normal and you can go to the peak. For example, if you look at our cricketing players and all, they take a rest. I mean, they take a break from the games for a week or 10 days or three weeks. Then they come back with rejuvenated and that's exactly what happens for you also. And more life force, that means you have energy and you know, all things in life actually happens because you have energy and if you are healthy, you have a higher level of energy. Give the body what it requires, desires, such as wholesome nourishment, okay, sunlight, clean water, movement. It's like maintaining a garden, okay. You treat yourself as a garden, then as a garden, you should give everything that is needed to nourish that plant, okay. Increased happiness and less depression is another benefit. Increased feeling of self-worth, you also start feeling that, yeah, you are worthy of expressing yourself. Save money, that's an important, I told you, you know, once you fall sick and go to hospital, you will face all the challenges. One is your illness, another one is medical bills. And more importantly, it helps you live longer with a quality life. It's not how long you live, but longer you live, it is better. But if you have a healthy, longer life, then it is still better. And more psychologically, feel better about yourself. That's also very important because, see, having a good view and opinion on yourself is very important. So some of the things that you should eat more fruits, exercise, drink more water, okay, peace of mind, eat well, walk more, meditation, read spiritual books or any inspirational book. Life insurance is another important thing I have to tell you. For a simple reason, actually, today accidents can happen anytime okay and incidents or health issues may come anything for example very recently i heard a story of a, a bollywood actress actually who unexpectedly had to face some kidney issues which costed her um, lakhs of rupees so health insurance is a new way of, of protecting yourself and it is better that you you are either yourself or you impress upon your parents and get a kind of insurance not only that, uh, most of the when you join a job and all, insurance becomes a part of your uh, job offer also. No more medical costs if you are regularly checking up and all, then it becomes a mere visit and a normal uh, course of discussion and normal procedures. Increase your fertility, this is also important. Many a times actually because of the stress and all, people are getting married late and even if they get married, then they don't have issues, kids and all. So that is also not a good sign. In fact, most of the world's uh, advanced countries like Japan, Europe and all, they are actually becoming what is called aging societies. That means there are no kids at all in that. Okay, And everybody is actually about 50 or 60. So India at least presently has a very good democratic dividend. That means there are many young people who are below 30. But if the current generation actually doesn't make healthy life and doesn't get that fertility, then probably we'll end up with a less population the way other countries are facing this problem okay so good health will actually make you more for time and uh, toward towards this actually you have to control your stress and how do you do that modern world is really undoubtedly stressful i told you everywhere stress uh, you must miss a bus that is a stressful thing you you come to an internal assessment test late that's also a stressful thing you have to wait for eight hours for a guest and that also causes stress and all this. So one of the issues facing is how to handle the stress with exercise. Okay, uh, you can do many things. Um, you can do exercise, good meditation. Okay, how can you achieve good health and well-being? Avoid addictions that I already told you. Protect your sight. That means have a limited screen time every day. Okay, this limited. Okay. Exercising regularly is also very important. Okay. And important like the social health is important even at work everywhere you try this benefits psychological benefits like the, like health insurance has many benefits like health also has those benefits now that we have moved from you uh, we started with your health then health family and we are moving to the society now health is essential to eradicating the extreme poverty and promoting growth of health the much of our actually populations expenses they go in hospitals so we need to build a very healthy society. 
this already have covered so if you are healthy then you have more of a immunity okay how to achieve well being very simple eat exercise happy positive thinking factors that your health exercise eat healthy drink plenty of water reduce stress healthy life okay and again i told you regular exercise nutritional diet enough sleep spiritual or religious practice okay fun hobbies leisure health esteem okay factors that uh, influence well being optimistic outlook i told you uh, somebody who positive look the way dhoni was telling us you have stress you have uncertainties your emotion but you have to take care realistic and achievable goals sense of purpose and meaning that's also important why are you what is this life my life is for what is that i want to contribute that comes from your sense of purpose and meaning a sense of belonging that means you belong to this college you belong to a family you belong to society you belong to a nation living in a fair and democratic society okay so well being actually basic need crisis counseling medical treatment retro to uh, justice leadership building civic engagement and lawful vision okay this i will cover eat healthy meals okay healthy habits drink lot of water most people for fun from funny reason they don't drink enough water minimum 6 to 8 liters you have to drink get exercises lose your extra weight this is another problem and this is also important this actually we practice during our pandemic but now it seems to be losing so hand washing before eating because when you go to a restaurant and all there are chances that some infected person might have come there okay and uh, protect your skin this is also important many a times actually skin this is also be very fatal okay so use like this like sunglasses cap and hats and also creams to protect your skin okay get enough sleep that is important get at least 7 hour more hours sleep avoid before bed okay and also have a regular sleep because of holiday and sunday you don't over sleep prevent substance use no drugs make your lifestyle choice better improved mental health clarity actually improved health mental gives you a clarity and when you get a clear mind then you can solve your problems okay so let me come to the end of this health is and its meaning and important in our contemporary world that is covered in this side factors that influence one's health that is also covered advantages of good health that is also covered and health and society that is also covered health family and other thing so how to maintain good health mindfulness spiritual everything hope um, i have been able to impress upon you that importance of health and how to get that the procedure and what are the benefits of that and what are the ways to get it and how the changing world actually is posing different challenges both environmental occupational and other other things and this is the entire summary so this comes to the end of my module 1 okay thank you